Hey guys, and welcome back to the latest episode in our submarine build. Just starting off the episode here with a little bit of gameplay footage for you guys. I, uh, I know I usually like to start the videos this way, so uh, this is a little bit more finished than you're going to see the sub in this video. This is uh, a lot more down the road, but yeah, I figured I'd just show it off a little bit. Um, in this video, we're going to be working on the diesel fuel for the modular engine, and we're going to get that all weighed out and balanced up. That's pretty important for the submarine and how it functions, so we'll get that figured out. It'll We'll tweak it on a little bit later, but yeah, we'll get right into the building, and if you guys like the sub you like the build you like the series don't f forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button and let me know that you uh you guys like what i got going on here i'll keep creating these videos keep creating these creations that's why i like it so or that's why i do it so you guys can enjoy them but uh yeah we'll get right into the build <laughs> Okay, so you guys can see that we've done quite a bit here. Um, there's quite a bit of work that was done to the engine off camera, and most of that is is basically cosmetic. A lot of it really doesn't change how the engine functions too much. Now, I did uh, I did go ahead and you'll see right now I'm I'm playing around with a couple different altitude hold options. I uh, Notice there's not really too many submarine options on the workshop, so this one's actually for a helicopter, and it, it doesn't end up working out. Just adds up, but um, you know we'll we'll spawn it in the world here and kind of give it a test. You'll see it's it's kind of wonky, um, but and also don't worry about these controls. Obviously, a lot of that gets moved around. I know it's kind of a chaotic mess of buttons in the in the submarine right now, but uh, yeah. So I mean the engine obviously it's running a lot better. Um, 
but the altitude hold was not at all working. It was kind of bobbing around a lot there, and we're kind of just going to take a break from that for a while because some other issues kind of uh, surface, and that's going to be an ongoing battle for quite a bit. Actually, the engine seems to have an overheating problem, and I, I just I add so much cooling to this engine. It just cannot get that under wraps. So um, later on, we do kind of figure that out. I, I lower the RPM and play with the gearboxes a bunch, and... Uh, end up getting it to a point where it, it, it pretty much can run indefinitely. Um, you know, when you're in the real hot waters, if you're not below the surface, it, it may overheat, but for the most part, you can pretty much run it indefinitely. And I know we're uh, kind of bouncing around a lot in this episode, but I, uh, I like to show kind of the full build process. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really shy to the fact that a lot of these builds take a lot of testing and whatnot. So, um, you know, I've, I've said it in the past, we, we test these boats as we go, and uh, that is n <laughs> no exception in this episode. I uh, end up spawning this thing into the world quite a bit, trying to get this altitude hold to work correctly, and it just doesn't work out for me. So... Um, you can say I got storm works, but uh, we figure it out later on. Um, just if you're kind of following along, trying to you know make your own sub back you know on your own computer, I would maybe not go with this option. And when I post the, uh, the submarine, I'll I'll have all of these microcontrollers in the workshop with links to them, so you guys could go on and grab those. Um, a lot of the more complex microcontrollers like, uh, you know, PID systems and whatnot, I, I like to just kind of get off the workshop. You know, I, I've played around with them a lot in the past and, you know, I, I understand them and it's just a little cumbersome, I find, for the average Stormwork player. And to be honest, there's a lot of people out there that can probably do it better than you and I. So, um, you know, credit where credit is due. Uh, a lot of these microcontrollers are great. Don't feel bad about using them. You know, a lot of these people will say right in the description, you know, use these for your own creations. Just give But uh, yeah, we're, we're heading towards the end of the episode in this one. So um, the rest of this is primarily just going to be a live play. I'm going to be playing around with the sub a lot just to kind of get a feel for it and kind of kind of really understand what it, it's doing and what it needs. This is a very, very early stage. The balances at, aren't at all where they should be. The cockpit is not even completed. There's buttons everywhere. The interior is not complete. So it's a very early stage. There's a lot of stuff we got to work out. And um, I like to kind of just play around with it a little bit and see what is needed. And, you know, do, in doing this, I can kind of get a sense for where I should put certain things as I build the uh, submarine to kind of balance it out. You know, if I notice the, the front is heavier, the rear is heavy, I can kind of, you know, put more heavier stuff towards the front or the rear or up high or low or change where the ballast tanks are and whatnot. There's a lot of stuff that plays into these submarines. So, um, you know, I think it's kind of important to just play as you go along. There's no way that you're going to be able to just make a submarine and, you know, fill the ballast with uh, water and turn that engine on and it's going to be straight and controllable and whatnot. It's going to be very, very hard to get all of those balanced forces. And, uh, you know, I, I just because of this reason, I suggest that you kind of go along and you test it and you add weights and, and whatnot so, but this is also probably a pretty good time to talk about where the sub build itself is going in the following episodes you'll see that we're going to start getting this uh, put together a lot quicker once the engine is more dialed um, but it's it's primarily going to be a research sub so it's really going to be for civilian and exploration use there's not really going to be any weapons or any crazy tech on this it's going to be pretty comfortable um, not too cramped and you'll see it's it's going to have two decks. So up uh, on that upper shell area, you see where the flat deck turns into um, that white hole. We're going to put a crew cabin up there. And we're going to squeeze in actually three beds and a couple lockers and a working sink and uh, a couple other things. But yeah, you'll see the sub ends up actually being quite roomy. <laughs> so if you have any suggestions as to what you want to see on the interior, um, you know, I I'm, I'm definitely could use some of those. We have a lot of room. The Basically the entire... Uh, back two-thirds of the hole you see that the lower half of the sub the black part the, the back two-thirds of that really is kind of empty as is um, you know at the current stage where I have the sub so I'm just kind of thinking of some stuff that we can put in there if you guys have any suggestions as to what you would like to see in there I'm open to hearing that okay so I'm going to just leave a couple minutes here of the live gameplay footage for you guys to enjoy and uh, then I'll come back and we will kind of close out the video. Thank you. 
All right, so that just about wraps it up for this one. If you guys liked the uh, video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button where you have more videos on the way. And like I said, when the sub is done, we will eventually get it onto the workshop so all of you can enjoy it. But uh, thank you very much for watching. The uh, sub series has been doing very, very well. It's been getting lots of support. So thank you all for that. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day.